Fourth chapter title The Four Muslims, Actors or Patsies We were also told that the training exercise involved a thousand people and, of course, amongst those one thousand people would have to be the four people who were recruited to play the parts of the mock terrorists. Therefore, as part of the exercise, they would have recruited four young Muslim men to carry four backpacks that were to contain mock explosive devices, who were their Muslim recruits. These Muslim men would naturally buy return train tickets and not one-way tickets, because they would be going home after playing their parts in the training exercise. One of them, the oldest, who would be considered the ringleader of the group because of his age, would have been asked to make a suicide video prior to 7-7-2005, being told it would form part of the training mock terrorist exercise in order to make the exercise and possibly a film to be made of it look as realistic as possible. He would obviously not have been told the details of the whole plan until later, probably when he and the others arrived at Luton on the 7th of July 2005, to make absolutely certain that the scenario of the drill which would take place that day could not be talked about by or to anyone. The second oldest would also be asked to make a similar video as a backup for just in case anything went wrong and or the oldest pulled out of the drill before the 7th of July 2005. It should be noted that neither Mohammed Siddiqui Khan nor Shehzad Tanweer specify what their targets were in their videos. It is also interesting to note that no one has ever claimed responsibility for the 7-7-2005 bombings except for a message on a fake Al-Qaeda website on the same day that was traced to Texas in the USA. Two years afterwards, because more and more people doubt the official story and are proving it to be lies and deception and are rightfully demanding an independent investigation, the police have arrested, frightened, intimidated and harassed Mohammed Siddiqui Khan's widow into publicly condemning her husband. She has a young daughter to protect and has stated that she is now afraid of the police. They kept her in custody for six days to intimidate her and then showed her what they claim is her husband's will and suicide note. Obviously this was done to get her to condemn her husband publicly in exchange for the authorities implied agreement to leave her alone, to which she will have agreed in order to protect herself and her young daughter from further harassment. Where were these documents found and why did it take two years for them to be shown to her? They are, after all, her rightful property, if genuine. Two years is ample time to forge a short handwritten note and signature on a will. In view of the amount of time this suicide note has taken to be mentioned, the timing of it, and all the lies and evidence the authorities have told, fabricated and planted, it cannot be trusted and must be considered another forgery, along with any other new so-called evidence that they might come up with. So the scene is set for the training exercise to go ahead. The fake terrorists have been recruited, the suicide videos have been made and everyone has been given basic instructions for the day that the exercise is to be put into operation, 7-7-2005. The four mock terrorist actors were to meet at Luton train station at 07.20 a.m. on the 7th of July 2005 and catch the 07.40 a.m. train from Luton to King's Cross Thameslink station with their pretend bomb backpacks and then split up and catch three tube trains and one bus to prearranged destinations 
where the fake explosions were to take place as part of the training exercise. Finally, the big day arrived. Everyone was ready. Everyone was either already where he was meant to be or was heading there. But first let us take a step backwards for a moment to look at the bigger picture and put this mock terror exercise into context with what was happening in Britain at that time. Tony Blair was in big trouble because he had just been sent a very clear message from the British nation via the May 2005 general election in which he was almost voted out of power that the British people did not want British troops fighting in George Bush's war of terror in the Middle East. So, to be able to keep the British troops fighting in the Middle East, Tony Blair desperately needed something to happen to change the nation's mind. Glen Eagles Tony Blair, George Bush, G8 meeting, agenda of addressing world poverty, forced on them by Live 8 concerts around the world, but not for long. Their lucrative, evil, phony and very unpopular war on terror, which is really a war of terror, will promptly return to the top of the agenda with four big bangs. No time for the poor, the rich have lots more money to make and people to murder. Leeds, where three of the Muslim actors lived and were recruited, and where the oldest, Mohammed Siddiqui Khan, was befriended by the local police and was regularly called upon by them to help them to sort out gang rivalry problems. Mohammed was also taken on a tour of the House of Commons by a Leeds MP who befriended him. The perfect patsy, someone who was made to believe he could trust the authorities and that they would therefore not deceive or harm him. Someone who could in turn recruit two other Muslims for the drill so they could all become famous and make a nice bit of clean and easy extra money and show their patriotism by helping the authorities to protect Britain from terrorism. Aylesbury, a fourth Muslim actor who has been recruited, Jermaine Lindsay from Aylesbury, will also meet them in Luton. Luton Transport security firm ICTS, another Israeli company, has an office just a mile away from the Luton train station, which is suspected to be where the Muslim actors received their final instructions before setting off for the train station. The details of which trains to board which carriages to get into, where to sit, and which bus to catch, where to sit on it, and at what time. London Commissioner of Police Ian Blair Rudy Giuliani, Mayor of New York on 9-11 Benjamin Netanyahu, who said 9-11 was good for Israel Peter Power, and all those taking part in the mock terrorism drill are present in central London, in or around London underground locations where the explosions take place, and also Tavistock Square. 